Yes. We're here to check on your pyloric stenosis and also your Zinker's diverticulum and your Shosky's ring. You're just a mess. Okay, so what I'd like for you to do, ma'am, if you would um, lay down on this table, and what I'm going to need for you to do is uh, roll over on your tummy. There you go. Just roll over on your stomach. All right, excellent. All right, so what I'm going to do today, the first thing I'm going to do is raise the height of this table. Well, at least I think I am. Okay, there it goes, finally. Because I don't want to bend over so far that I'm breaking my back. All right, somebody has thoughtfully provided me with an image receptor. So what the first thing I'm going to do, um, and you can do this at a different SID, but the way we teach it is with a 40-inch SID. What I'm going to do is take a radiograph of this person's esophagus. Now, ordinarily, the esophagus does not show up on an x-ray. We can't see it. Unless, of course, we have some barium on board. Oh, it looks like you've already got some barium. Did somebody mm -hmm. splash barium on you in, in clinic? Three-year-old Clorox. No kidding. Oh, okay. Three-year-old got loose with some Clorox. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this collimation down to about 7 inches wide by 17 inches long. That should be gracious, plenty of collimation to be able to see the esophagus. Okay, now where is the patient's esophagus? Well, the patient's esophagus is in the mid-sagittal plane, lined up basically with the patient's spine. So if I'm going to get a good look at that esophagus, what do I need to do? Oblique the patient, exactly. So ma'am, if you could, what I'd like for you to do is roll up into an RAO position with about a 35 to 40 degree obliquity. There we go, perfect. Okay, now most of your patients aren't going to understand what a 35 degree obliquity is, so you'll just have to ask them to roll up and say, okay, well right there's about good. Okay, super. Now where's my central ray supposed to be? Funny you should ask. Okay, I need my central ray to be at about the level of T6. T6 is just above T7. How do I find T7? Exactly. Lower margin or lower angle of the scapula. Okay, right there is the lower angle of the scapula. I'm just going to go about one inch above that. Whoops. There we go. Okay, now I need to be in line with the patient's, um, basically with the middle of the patient's body. So I can see her neck is right here. I see that I need to take her that way just a little bit. Like right about there -ish. Because I want to make sure that I include her throat all the way down to her um, cardiac sphincter where the esophagus goes into the stomach. Okay, so that should do the trick for me. Now, one more thing that I'm going to need. Something for this patient to drink. I need her to drink a cup of barium. Now, I don't have a straw to go in it, but right here goes a nice cup of barium. If you would, hold on to that with your hand. Don't really drink that. That's my coffee. Okay, so what I'm going to do. Now, according to the book, we're supposed to get the patient to breathe out and then hold their breath on expiration. But I'm not going to worry about breathing instructions right this minute. The main thing I want is for this patient to be drinking while I make my exposure. So, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, ma'am, what I'm going to need you to do is just take some nice steady sips from this cup. And while you're doing that, we're going to take an x-ray, okay? Okay. All right, very good. All right, now go ahead. All right, start drinking. All right, we're drinking, we're drinking, we're drinking. And beep. Okay. All right, ma'am, you can relax. You don't have to drink any more of that barium. All right, now, something that I forgot to do. I hope I don't get called out on this too badly. Uh, I need to shield my patient. Okay, there's no reason not to shield on this examination. 
Oh, the other thing I forgot to do is mark my film. Where should I mark my film? Should I mark it high or low? Low. No. High. high. Okay, I'm going to mark my film high, and you can either put a left marker on or a right marker on, just as long as it's anatomically correct. I know usually we say mark the side down, which would mean a right marker here, but you could put a left marker right here because that's less likely to get lost in the buggy. Okay, super. All right, now my next image. What I need to do is get this patient to roll into a right lateral position. Uh, okay, let me go ahead and get a shield for you. Ordinarily, I wouldn't throw a whole apron over my patient, but that's the only shield I've got. So there we go. That might be a little heavy for you, but hopefully that's not too uncomfortable. All right, now I want to make sure my patient is straight on the table. Is she? Well, kind of. All right, man, I'm going to bring your shoulders towards me just a little bit. There we go. See how easy that is? All right, now, I'm still going to be 17 inches by 7 inches across. I want to line up basically with the patient's mid-coronal plane. So I'm going to take a look. There we go. Um, and actually, what we got there looks pretty good. I want my light field to be just above the patient's shoulder. And again, I want to be centered at approximately the level of T6, an inch above T7, right about there. A couple of different ways you can do this. You can either find that inferior angle, which I think is the best way to do it, and then go up from there. Or you can find the patient's jugular notch, and then go down about three to four inches from there. That should put you at about the same level. However you want to do it is fine. All right, so I'm going to get my patient, once again, holding my cup of barium, right here. And I'm going to have a straw rigged up to this thing so that she can drink it easier. And, all right, ma'am, I need you to bring your arm up out of the way as much as you can. There we go. I'm going to need a really long straw. Oh, a silly straw. That would be perfect. Okay, ma'am. All right, that looks good. All right, this time I'm going to mark side down. So I'm going to put a right marker on here. Very good. All right. All right, ma'am, same thing as before. What I need you to do whenever I tell you to start drinking, just start taking some nice steady sips of that white stuff and just drink it on down for me, okay? okay. All right, here we go. All right, start drinking. Drinking, drinking, drinking. Beep. I'm going to wait until she's got a couple of good sips before I actually make my exposure. All right, ma'am, you can relax once again. And as you know by now, relaxation is a temporary thing. All right, now for my next picture. Now, this one is not as popular. A lot of doctors don't really care for this, but it's something that we're, we're going to teach it to you anyway, just so you have it in your bag of tricks. This is going to be an LAO drinking left anterior oblique. All right, ma'am, if you would, roll back over on your stomach again, like you were before. There we go. All right, fantastic. And my patient knows the drill. Okay, she's already rolled up into a shallow obliquity. Um, 45 degrees for this is probably too much. So if you look at your patient and, and you think they're 45 degrees, um, roll them back down just a little bit. We're not doing we're not doing L-spine work here. This is something different. Okay, now, my patient, once again, has got crooked on the table. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push her hip toward that back wall just a little bit. Okay, ma'am, you just relax and let me do the positioning, okay? There we go. Just straighten her out a little bit. Once again, aiming for the midline. Going to be uh, probably an inch or two above the... Uh, spine. The spine's right here. I want to make sure my light field is above her shoulders. Um, the book says two inches above the shoulder. That's going to be good. All right, excellent. At about the level of T6 once again. And again, you know, using that uh, inferior angle works so well. That's going to probably be your best bet as far as your positioning goes. All right, I want to make sure that my shield is not in the light field. That would mess me up. All right, ma'am, I'm going to give you your cup of barium once again. Here it goes. 
All right, I promise, this is the last time I'm gonna make you drink this stuff. I know you're probably getting tired of it right about now. Okay, by some miracle, my tube is still in detent after all that messing around. Okay, so, I think we're set. All right, ma'am, if you would, uh, just start drinking, okay? Hold still and drink, 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 beep. Okay, you can relax and breathe normally. All right, let me have that barium away from you. All right. Hmm. All this x-ray is thirsty work. All right, so there we go. Those are the three main positions that we use for esophagram. Now, typically, this is going to be done after a fluoroscopy procedure um, where the doctor's already got some spot films, and they just want these for some follow-up images. And the idea is to show the entire esophagus with contrast in it, you know, all the way from the throat down to the cardiac sphincter at the stomach. Um, and if you demonstrate that, then you're good to go. Okay, what if we take this image and we're off-center one way or another? Well, we're going to have to repeat it. Sorry, you're going to have to drink again. Um, okay, so find, figure where the esophagus is, and then you can determine if you need to be more left or more right. Hmm. But hopefully you're going to get it right the first time, because we're just experts like that. All right, super. Now then, it's y'all's turn to give it a try. All right, and Miss Sarah, cut.